and welcome back to the program. I'm joined now by Dr. Cam Patterson, UAMS Chancellor. Good to see you a little closer than I'm normally seeing you, usually at a, either a press conference across from the table or uh, I'm watching you on YouTube, one of those two. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation about uh, everything that's going on right now. Have you ever seen anything like this in your lifetime? No, you know, the, the, the closest approximation was HIV, uh, but that was slow motion. And, and this is a warp speed, and that's the big difference here. How prepared do you think the state has been for this type of pandemic? I, I've been really impressed with how rapidly people have pulled together. And uh, I have, I've not seen anything that the state has done to slow down our response. Our, our, our biggest challenge really has been the availability of testing and the availability of uh, personal protective equipment. And, and that's really because of national shortages, you know, crimson in the supply chain that, that are impacting every hospital in all 50 states. But our, our, our state's response has been strong. I'm not asking you to place blame on the, those shortages, but why do we have those shortages? Should we have could we have ramped up? Could we have had some sort of stockpile in advance? What, what, what allowed us to not predict that we would need this type of uh, equipment in this type of time span? Yeah, well, we, we do have some stockpiles. We have stockpiles of, of personal protective equipment. Uh, they really weren't uh, designed for uh, this kind of massive, rapid disease spread that we're seeing with COVID-19. Uh, the, the other challenge that, that we're having, though, is that there are um, reagents that we need for assays, uh, things that weren't stockpiled and, and wouldn't necessarily be predicted to be needed. And then I, I think the, you know, the, the place where we could have done better nationally is, uh, you know, we as end users of this have not gotten good information about the supply chain and about when things would be drying up. And, you know, we're gonna to have to do a, a better job the next time something like this happens. We can't know the day of that the nation is running out of a supply. Yeah, one of the critical issues, you guys have talked about it in almost all of your press conferences, is the fact that you're trying to ramp up testing to a certain level. There is a lot that has happened, particularly in the last week or so. Yeah. Uh, you guys have some things going on. But again, just, I mean, the, it's the shortage of the test kits is what has led to this not being able to do the test earlier. Is that, is that correct? Well, it, it's actually uh, probably three problems at once happening. When we talk about kits, there's the collection kit. So the, the swabbing that allows us to collect the virus, uh, that's been in short supply. Uh, the, the reagents that are needed to run tests if we do them on site have been in short supply. And then the, the central uh, commercial laboratories, LabCorp, Quest, you know, those, those types of places have been overwhelmed with samples coming in and so they have long queues that create delays as well. So it's really all three of those things at once. Now the way to get over that is to do the test yourself. And so we've created at UAMS our own test to, uh, to detect COVID-19 infection. And you know, knock on wood, if everything goes well, we'll be running 240 of those tests per day here in Arkansas starting this weekend or at the latest very early next week. Yeah, I'm not trying to point fingers, so please mm -hmm. know that this question is an honest question here. When you saw things happening worldwide or in some of the other countries, and certainly Arkansas was one of the late states to even start contracting COVID-19 uh, patients, what, what prevented you from assuming that you needed to step up and start getting those tests and that testing process going even sooner? Was it, was it just a, we didn't think it was gonna be as big as it was gonna be or what? It's a new virus. So the test has to be created from scratch. And so one of the things that you need before you do the test is A, you need to understand how you create an assay for this particular virus. And, and you know we only had information about that really weeks ago, not months ago. Uh, the, the other thing that you need to create an assay are positive and negative controls. So you need samples from people who you know were COVID-19 infected. And we've, you know, you know for, it's good news that we've had very few of those patients 
here in the state of the uh, in the state of Arkansas. But in the absence of known patients, we can't develop an assay to to test po positive and negative controls to ensure that the assay works. As we sit and talk, chloroquine has been thrown out there as a potential. I don't know, remedy, but at least something to slow it down, something that should be considered a little bit more thoroughly. What is your take on the chloroquine debate, a chloroquine debate right now? Well, th there are a number of things that have been thrown around. Hydroxychloroquine is one example. Uh, there are antiretroviral, there's an antiretroviral that, that people are, are testing for this and, and uh, other possible treatments. Um, you know, we, we need to look at all of them. Uh, I, I, I think we also have to be careful, though, that we don't create runs on these drugs, which, as we were just talking about, you have supply chain issues with them just as well. Uh, so, you know, I think it's important to be judicious and not just to throw something at the wall because you think that it might stick. Um, you know, the, the mainstay of treatment for this will be uh, the same as the mainstay of treatment for a severe influenza um, infection, which is supportive care, respiratory care. Uh, you know, we've had two critically ill patients at UAMS that we've cared for who have been mechanically ventilated. Uh, so the, the most important asset that you can have is a team of professionals that are ready to care for someone if they become critically ill. Now, if, you're, if you have a COVID-19 infection and you're not critically ill, the thing to do is to stay at home and just seek symptomatic relief. We've seen some recoveries in Arkansas. We have. A recovery in Arkansas. Yeah, a, a miraculous recovery. Is that encouraging? Way. I mean, does that, what does that tell you as a doctor, as a physician? Well, well it tells you a couple of things. It, it tells you how bad this can get, how, you know, how critically ill people can get. This is, you know, this is non-trivial, uh, but it, it's encouraging that, uh, you know, we're able to turn uh, something around at such a late stage. And, and Robbie, I'm hopeful that the, you know, the mortality rates that we've seen from cases in China and in other um, uh, countries are an overestimate of what we will experience in the U.S. with uh, the healthcare system that we have here uh, available to people who, who get severe infections. So one thing I know for certain is over the next week to two weeks we will see a lot more testing done. We will. Likely going to produce more cases because you're going to be doing more testing. What, what, what would you tell the public? What should they expect to see? How should they react to what you, you can see on the short-term horizon? Yeah, so the, the numbers are absolutely going to, to go up. That, that's entirely predictable. We've been saying that since we had the first case in, in, in the state of Arkansas. And, and frankly, they, they may bounce around a little bit as the availability of testing changes. If reagent constraints decrease the amount of testing that occurs, the numbers might go down because of that. It, as we make more testing available within the state, that might make the numbers go up. So the, the number from day to day may not be a, an accurate reflection of the amount of transmission that's going on. And it's a lagging indicator. It's, it, it's a lagging indicator. And you know, really what we hope to see is that moment where we see a consistent plateau. And you know, that plateau is going to appear in the cases that we detect probably a week or more after we've actually contained the virus. Yeah. Dr. Cam Patterson, UAMS Chancellor, thank you so much. Thanks for your leadership during this time. It's been comforting and reassuring to see you at the podium so much. Well, this is a big problem for the state, and UAMS is here to help. All right, thanks. You bet. We're back with more right after this. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners.